Welcome to 10 Talks, real conversations for champions with champions, where a champion life is a 10 life. Thank you for joining our team today. I'm Carlette Patterson, your head sports life coach at the Life Training Academy, and it's our desired outcome to share our passion for sports life coaching by training you to live a 10 life. You and your life matter. Let's get coached. Hi, team. Welcome to Conversations with Champions for Champions. These are real conversations all about how the coronavirus is really affecting us. Each one of these pro athletes season has been cut short. We're incredibly grateful to have them back home. They're healthy and they're safe. And for that, we are very grateful. We wanna express our gratitude to all the people on the front lines who are our true champions in this season of health and safety. We are incredibly grateful for you and send our prayers and our good thoughts and well wishes for you. We want you to know that you are our champions. As we dive into this conversation, I want you to really meet Sophie, Quinn, Sarah, and Andy. I want you to hear their stories. They are all part of the Life Training Academy. They are going through our MeQ courses right now on career exploration and the power of purpose. And I have had the honor of being their sports life coach when they were college athletes as well as their pro career. So meet our champions and just get ready to hear their stories about what's going on in their world right now as they really go through what it's like to have their season cut short and how they're managing their winning strategies, their words of wisdom, and how they're staying connected, not only to their heart and their spirit, to their friends and their family. So Andy is playing pro tennis in Australia. She played tennis at Auburn University. She went on to become certified as one of our sports life coaches, and she now works for us as assistant coach for Patterson Sports Ventures and the Life Training Academy. Sophie is a certified life coach as well, and she played basketball at Arizona State University and went on to play her pro career in Italy. Sophie's in quarantine right now, so lots of prayers and love to her while she sits through this short season of making sure that she is healthy and safe. Quinn is in Canada, and she played basketball at Arizona State University and went on to her pro career in Spain. And Sarah is in Albuquerque, New Mexico right now. She was playing pro basketball in Israel, and she too played at Arizona State University. So welcome to our conversations with Champions for Champions. We want you to hear their stories, and most of all, we want to give you hope. Hi team, welcome to a conversation with our pro athletes and we are just grateful that they are home safely. It's been quite the journey and to everyone listening, most importantly, we want to express our gratitude to all the first responders and everybody that is taking great care of everyone and to those that are staying home when we know that it's hard to be isolated and to really be cut off from the things that um, you call life at this point. So. In this season, all of our lives have changed dramatically, and we're incredibly grateful for everyone that is doing their part to make sure that we are staying healthy and safe. So starting with gratitude and then just transitioning into, we want to catch everybody up on what exactly happened from a pro athlete perspective, what happened in your world, in your life, what's happening now. We have the pleasure of having our pro athletes on this conversation, and each one of them has had a different experience, as well as kind of all the same, mostly just stepping into those conversations for change. So Sophie, we're going to start with you. You were playing basketball in Italy. Kind of take us through just really the transformation that's happened in your life and, and give us the season dates, kind of when this started and where you are right now. Uh, yeah, so actually, I think today marks five weeks since the first day they shut down schools. So um, it seems like three months since that's happened. Um, I think um, from then, let's see. So five weeks ago, they shut down schools. And then a couple weeks after that, we weren't allowed to play in games, but we could practice. Um, and then we were allowed to play in a game, but with no fans. That was the first week of March. And then that was our last game. So our first and last game without fans. And um, since then, it's kind of just escalated. Um, and we were, the next week after that, we kind of had to decide if we wanted to stay or go home. And so 
Um, I've actually been home now for a week and a few days, and it seems like I said like a month. So um, it's all the good thing about it, though, is I've really become adaptable to it. And um, I think that's the best thing I've learned from this is I've been able to really adapt um, over these five weeks and kind of learn what I want to get from this. So that's kind of been the beauty of it. But it's definitely been an adjustment and something that I think we all just have to, you know, take as it comes. And so you were able to get home, which was a great blessing from that perspective. And you are in quarantine now. So tell us kind of what it's like. What are you doing as a winning strategy being in quarantine? Um, so a big winning strategy for me has just been to keep a routine. So each morning I get up, um, I work out. And then after that, you know, I do maybe stretching or just something kind of to ease my mind into the day, listen to some good music. And then from then, um, usually somebody has called me or FaceTime by then. So I kind of connect with my friends and family since I'm living alone and I'm not around anybody. Um, and then it's kind of just what I want to make of the day. So anywhere from, you know, reading, um, maybe watching a few shows, um, kind of going on with the day. And then as night comes, um, usually a couple more people are calling. And then I kind of just go into my night routine of like stretching and stuff like that. But the biggest winning strategy is just a routine. And just staying, you know, st getting my mind in the same space as it was before this all happened. Well, thank you. We are really grateful you're home and grateful that we have you to be sharing really your own winning strategies. And I know, team, you're going to hear constantly that it's all about connecting to the people we love. It's about our relationships. And that's going to be a thread that really weaves through all of our conversations because the gift that we are getting from this virus is to really anchor into understanding what what's important to us, what matters, what are our tens, and really honoring those relationships. So, Quinn, let's let's talk about your journey. You were in Spain, so kind of catch us up on on what that's been about. Uh, yeah, I just got back from Spain. It's been about a week now. Actually, I think yeah, a week exactly. And uh, my uh, experience was kind of similar to Sophie's. I guess the difference is that um, I think things happened a lot faster because um, we were kind of in a situation where we're beside Italy and we're kind of watching that happen and the virus was sort of starting to get into the country but um, I think kind of in typical Spanish fashion they're very laid back and uh, so I hadn't really, nobody had really thought too much about it until, um, well, it would have been, I guess, two weeks ago from now, the, the two weeks ago, Monday. And uh, we went from, yeah, being basically not even on, on our minds to games canceled on Tuesday, or no, sorry, games were uh, oh, or closed on Tuesday. By Wednesday, they were canceled. And by Friday, I had decided with my agent that I was going home. So yeah, in, in the span of five days, we went from normal to like complete shutdown. And, and tell us what it's been like. You live in Canada. So tell us what it's been like since you got home. What are your rituals and routines, winning strategies, and performance barriers? What are you experiencing with this just happening so quickly and changing so dramatically? Uh, yeah, well, um, yeah, definitely being home is uh, I'm, it's great because I get to see my family and stuff and I get um, to do, yeah, to, uh, to spend time with them, which is amazing. And <laughs> everyone's kind of stuck inside, so there is that. But um, I guess um, my winning strategies have just been like, yeah, trying to also stick with the routine, find a lot of stuff to keep me occupied and busy and I guess one of the big things that I've been trying to do is reframe this whole thing. I'm using it as uh, kind of like a time to relax a little bit and take a step back because I'm always so focused on sports and basketball. And right now I'm literally forced to not play basketball. So I'm taking it as a little bit of a break and still trying to like keep up my fitness in other ways. And then I'm just using this time, I guess, to like get all those little things on my to-do list done that like I've literally been looking at for the last year and like now is the perfect time to do it. So that's what I've been doing. 
So team, I hope you're hearing that really, again, our champions are coming at it from a perspective of how can we invest this time to really do the things that we haven't had time to do before and how can we discover some new strengths of ours based on the fact that the strength that we count on all the time has been taken away from us. So that pause or that reframing is an opportunity for us to discover more about us. And, and I would say this is a great character building time. I mean, really having to go into things that we've, you know, we've never been familiar with or things that we have and we've just put them on the back burner. So Quinn, thank you for getting home from Spain into Canada, being able to be with your family and just share with us that quick process that happened to really change everything. So Sarah, let's go to you in terms of you were in Israel and so now you're back in New Mexico. So take, tell us about the journey that happened from Israel to New Mexico. Um, well, I would say it's similar to Quinn's experience in a sense that it was pretty slow going into the whole quarantine and the awareness of it. And then all of a sudden it was bang, bang, bang. Things were shutting down, government lockdown. You got to get home. Um, but I was in a very interesting situation because I just recently tore my ACL um, at the end of the season. So I was current at the time I was getting ready to have surgery in Israel. Um, and I found out about hmm, three days before I flew home, um, that my surgery is going to be canceled due to hospital protocol, um, and canceling all non-urgent surgeries. Uh, so my mindset switched and I said, okay, well, I might as well get home and wait this out with my family. And I spoke with my agent and my team and I said, Hey, can we change up the flight for me? Cause at the time I was still going to be in Israel for about a month longer. Uh, rehabbing and doing my surgery and all that so everything switched up for me I was very stressed very panicked but I guess one of the biggest strategies that I was able to use during that time is to take it one step at a time you know because um, I couldn't handle all of it all in one moment um, it was one day at a time one step at a time and eventually everything worked out for the best um, but now I'm home and I think that my big winning strategy is just rest and recovery um, I've been really stressed, I've been really busy, and now I'm home and I'm jet lagged and it's okay to sleep in and enjoy that sleep, um, which I have been. So that's been my biggest uh, winning strategy lately. Sarah, thank you so much for that. And team, I want you to hear that rest and recovery is a huge winning strategy. We are going through so much stress and when we are going through stress, it is so much, there's so much cortisol that's just going through us and it's just a huge um, energy vampire. It really takes a lot of energy and emotional management to manage stress and uncertainty. And we don't know when this season is going to be over. What we do know is that moment by moment, we're incredibly grateful for the people that are doing all the work to try to keep us healthy and then our families really honoring our families, loving on our families, finding new ways to have conversations and interact with them and, and just honor this incredibly unique time that we're stepping into from a history perspective. So Sarah, we're really grateful you're home and gonna get that, that injury of yours healed as well as get you, you know, rested and recovered. So Andy, let's talk about you, our pro tennis player. The rest of the girls are all basketball players and they are on their teams. And then we've got Andy, who's a pro tennis player and she's on an individual sport. She's in Australia. And um, Andy, tell us about what it's like for you. Well, I guess when it all kind of went down, I was um, away at a tournament in Canberra and um, I was playing a lead up tournament to some pro, uh, pro tournaments. and it was kind of like every day we would hear something of like, oh, like one pro, we would wake up, we'd get an announcement of like one pro tournament's canceled the next. And, you know, we're watching the whole world go through what they are and we didn't seem too affected at the time in Australia. And then like, finally the last day, it was like the tournament we're in, they canceled it. And that was like, okay, like I just knew I had to get home, get on a plane. Um, so that was a little stressful trying to get all that organized. Um, and then since then I've just been home. Um, Australia hasn't been too greatly impacted, like in comparison to the rest of the world. So really just watching what's happening in other countries. Um, it's been a little bit stressful, but 
yeah, no, it's just been, it's nice to be home with my family and feeling a lot more safe than I was when I was away. And Andy, what have been your winning strategies for really handling the anxiety and the stress that comes with uncertainty? Um, it's definitely been reaching out to my friends, you know, who are in the US and who are in Europe um, and even here in Australia, just making sure everyone's okay and checking in with everyone, letting them know that I'm here to support them if they need it. Um, and I guess being able to give hope to others has helped me a lot. So that's been a real winning strategy. Yeah, very grateful. I think gratitude is another huge winning strategy. Just grateful for the things that we have and the things that maybe we've taken for granted. So girls, I really want to talk about your message to the world, your message to other athletes. And really, you know, the whole world's lives have been changed and we're all figuring out new winning strategies. What would you say from, you know, as you watch your film and you really go through this experience, what words of wisdom would you like to share with college athletes or young athletes as they try to keep in shape, they try to honor just the uncertainty of everything? And most importantly, how do they keep up that competitive spirit and, and have hope that you know, we're going to get through this in a way just as champions do? So Sophie, what are your words of wisdom? Um, my words of wisdom would just to be to take, you know, full advantage at this time. Um, but I mean, obviously with grace too, because, um, it is a difficult time and it's very unfortunate what's going on. And a lot of people are missing out on a lot of great things right now. Um, but I think it's a blessing though too, because it gives us at least a couple weeks for sure, if not a month more to kind of work on our craft or work on whatever we want to work on, but also gives us a time to kind of tap into other things we may never have gotten the chance to try or to kind of learn. So I would just encourage people to like, just try new things, take advantage of the time, um, but also keep working on what you're really passionate about, but don't be afraid to try other things, you know, just maybe learn a new recipe from your mom or something simple, you know, like that, just to kind of keep your mind sharp and, and that kind of thing. And the biggest thing too, is just to, um, you know, fuel your body with good food, um, keep a healthy lifestyle. And you know, I mean, that's only going to feed your brain and your mind to keep that sharp, which will make your whole body feel good. So that's kind of my, my take on it. So Sophie, thank you for just those words of wisdom in terms of healthy mind, healthy choice, healthy body. You know, this is a time that discipline is going to play a huge winning strategy in terms of us really being for ourselves and for all the people that, you know, for everybody staying in, we're doing it for others. And so that's that commitment to really playing a small part in something bigger than ourselves. So a lot of winning strategies packed in those, those words of wisdom. Thank you, Sophie, for that. Quinn, what are your thoughts? Um, I guess I would just say, seeing as this is something that's literally worldwide affecting everyone, um, there's been some really obviously horrible effects on health and the system and some really devastating effects on the economy too and i think that everybody is affected by this and likely everybody is struggling in some way in their own way and so i guess my message or what i could what i would hope is that people can just be a little more compassionate with each other just a little bit kinder because we're all going through this together well, I love just the power of being kind and compassionate, and those are huge skills that sometimes as competitors, we don't practice a lot of that. It's more of that competitive spirit and really being more into ourselves in terms of making sure that we're in shape. And this is an opportunity to really be not about us and about something so much bigger than that. So thank you, Quinn, for those winning strategies. Sarah, tell us about what you're thinking. Um, I mean, I think Sophie and Quinn have phenomenal winning strategies and I'm following them myself um, because they're great. I think that something that's really helped me um, in this time and I think would help a lot of other people worldwide is just to stay aware um, and and just stay up to up to pace with everything that's happening because it's changing every day. Um, but don't consume yourself with it and because it can get pretty depressing. Um, so I'd say like maybe once a day, just check in on the news and see what's happening and spread awareness about staying inside so that we can all 
get through this sooner and, and safe and as safe as possible. Just help each other help people um, all over, you know, one little, one little tidbit of information could help, I don't know, a handful of different people. So, um, just, just stay, stay positive through it all, but also just be aware and, and help people understand that this is, this is a big deal. And, and in order for all of us to be safe and, and, and out of this situation as soon as possible, I think the more people that, that know, the better it is. Sarah, thank you for just that respecting the, the rules of what we're being told to do and knowing that they're for our good and, and to really just honor that this is a season, a moment in time that we all have to make sacrifices for everyone to be able to get back to their life. And, and hopefully it's going to be better than it was um, before. We didn't even know that we were going to be interrupted. We didn't know that we were going to be challenged to the level that we are. And, and this is where champions really that champion mindset is it's an opportunity to dig deep and to, to find something in us that we didn't even know we had and we know the whole world is having to do that and and i know from my heart and and the heart of each one of you is that that's what we're committed to is we're just here for everybody else to help bring out the champion heart of every person out there and and sometimes that happens when we're faced with our biggest performance barriers or obstacles that come into our life. So Andy, tell us about really your heart and where you are as you manage just the vulnerability of this feeling. Yeah, um, I guess just being truthful to like what I'm feeling um, and finding winning strategies for managing that. I think if I ignore that I'm feeling like anxious one day or worried or and just trying to like fake it till I make it and be overly positive. I don't think that's really going to help me in the long run. I think I'll just end up, you know, having it's just, um, just trying to acknowledge um, my truth and then just managing my emotions and asking for help if I need it from my friends and family. Well, again, Andy, a huge gift of just being able to say, you know, I need help, I'm not doing well today, and ask for whatever we need. I think that is a huge winning strategy, as well as staying connected to really the people that we, we love and know that we're all having good and bad moments and just how can we love on each other on a level that, that we didn't even know we would need to. So one of our tools that is really um, you know, a gift to each one of us is called STATS. We talk about living in the 10 zone. We talk about STATS being on a scale of one to 10. One is low and 10 is something that really means a lot to us. And really being able to start to anchor in our 10s because this is a moment in time that they're going to be very different 10s than playing basketball or tennis or just doing our normal rituals and routines. So as we give hope to the world, I just love for each one of you to share a 10 moment from this experience that you've discovered about yourself. And then on social media, we'd love for people to really engage in sharing their 10 moments because we are connected socially from social media. And instead of reading about any of the, the negative things, is there a way that we can give hope by sharing our 10 moments? So Sophie, you wanna start with sharing what's a 10 moment that you've learned about yourself in this experience and this season. Um, a 10 moment for me that I've learned about myself is just um, that I was not really great at just um, taking advantage of the time I do have for myself with literally nobody around. And I think in the process, um, I've really been able to find some new hobbies and some new things that I really enjoy doing. And that's been a huge 10 for me. Um, and then um, I think just connecting with people I haven't connected with in like years, honestly, that have kind of been checking in just because of what happened in Italy and stuff. And that's given me kind of an opportunity to be like, oh, well, like I should probably check in with some of my other friends. So it was just kind of an eye-opening experience for me. But those were the, the two tens, I would say, for me. And what do you want to name those 10 moments, Sophie? Um, Self-reflection. Excellent. I love it. And what new hobbies have you discovered as you branched into this 10 moment? Um, how therapeutic adult coloring books are. <laughs> yes, um, another winning strategy. Yeah, so I, I literally, put, yeah, I, I put on like a podcast. 
podcast that's like um, something I'm interested in and I listen to the podcast while doing a coloring book and I know it's strange but it is seriously my mind is like really calm after doing them so it's been good. <laughs> Sounds like full engagement right you're listening to something so that you're learning and then physically and, and again as athletes who are used to being very very physical being able to have something to do is, is a huge winning strategy. So Sophie, well done on those 10 moments. Thank you. All right, Quinn, share your 10 moments in terms of what you've learned about yourself in this season. Uh, I think my 10 with this whole experience is just getting to use this as kind of like a reset period. Um, this is like probably the first time in like 10 years since I got serious about basketball that I've literally like not been allowed to go to the gym. And obviously that's frustrating, but the way I'm looking at it is like literally the entire world is in the same situation right now. So we're all in this together and this has been great for me to get some rest for my body, get some rest for my brain because burnout is real. And uh, yeah, just kind of like find other ways to stay in shape and, you know, like take care of myself that way. I love it. What do you want to name your 10 moment? Uh, mandatory reset. <laughs> well said. <laughs> okay, well said. Sarah, share your 10 moments with us. Um, I would say one of my biggest 10 moments was just being reunited with like my whole family, including my brother. Um, as a professional athlete, you miss a lot of family moments like Christmas and Thanksgiving and all that stuff. So, you know, unfortunately, under not so great circumstances, we are all together yet again for an um, unlimited or unsure amount of time. But uh, it's more time that I'm sure I would have, you know, if this wasn't happening with the whole family being together. So um, it's nice having my brother home and we... Um, had a good workout this morning, so that was another 10 moment. Um, and so it's only been, I've only been home for about two days, so we're still building up on those 10 moments, but I'd say those are my big ones. And what would you like to name that 10 moment? Um, whole family reunited and work out with the little bro. <laughs> love it, love it. Woohoo, well done. All right, Andy, share your 10 moments with this season. I think my 10 moments are just um reaching out to people each day like even if it's just you know texting a text here and there or if we do facetime they're huge 10 moments in the day for me and what do you want to name those 10 moments um connecting excellent love it so girls thank you so much for sharing just your journey and your hearts and just you know your winning strategies words of wisdom as we go through this season that that is such a, you know, it's a mystery to all of us how this is going to work out, what we can do. And, and for everybody listening, we just want you to know that we are here to give you hope. We are committed to really anchoring in gratitude and sending love and prayers and support to all the people that are working to get all of our world back together and, and healed and healthy again. And we are so, so grateful. So we have 10 talks with these pro athletes that really dive into many more of their stories and the things that they've discovered about themselves on this journey to becoming a pro athlete. And, and we wanted to make sure that we let you hear their journey right now in real time in terms of these conversations that are happening as we go through this transformational season. And then we'll bring our 10 talks to you as well so you can get to know each one and really what their story is as they're discovering how to be pro athletes in the world of today and it was very different months ago when we recorded some of our conversations and we will stay on the journey with them as we just begin to practice living in the moment and really gratitude and passion towards just the simple things so thank you and thank you very much for just everything that we're committed to to doing to get all of us healthy and healed again thank you Thank you for listening. We'd like to get you coached up. So head over to iTunes and Spotify and hit subscribe. And remember, a champion life is a 10 life. You and your life matter. Create a life that you love. Give hope to others and be and choose nothing but 10s. Be you. The world needs you. Go to lifetrainingacademy.com to start your training and get coached.